I think we're going to start to sit back down and have some um, the extremely preliminary concluding thoughts. And I can see there's just conversations and little clusters happening all over, and we want to very much exp uh, expand on that spirit of conversation in this, these last few minutes that we have together. Thanks. OK. All right, so what I thought I'd do is I, I, I just took a, I took a few notes around a, a few different cluster of categories. I think I have around seven. <laughs> Uh, and I'll try to maybe uh, introduce, that, uh, introduce them really briefly and hope that, it, that they might trigger some association or something that has been brewing for you that would provide an opportunity to share. And I'll ask Julie and um, Jeffrey as well. So I already earlier this morning talked about bastard, childs and wrong fork, bastard children and wrong forks. But that, but the, that, of course, we started with Freed. Um, Sabina brought up Freed right away. And, and a few others brought up Freed on the blog and throughout, but it was kind of interesting how we actually let go of him a bit, uh, that, that, that this conversation wasn't dominated by the particular way that he um, located theatricality um, you know, outside of the palatable. Uh, but also, but it, it continues, I think, throughout both in Jeffrey talking about film being the bastard child, being associated with mass culture, um, and then equivocally being incorporated into the museum context. Um, or even today, just now, Sabina talking about the way that some of these forms have been around but been other in the museum, or the side dish, <laughs> the parallel event. So that's a theme. Another is obviously the many different forms, the many different types of temporality we're really talking about, which can be, of course, attached to different forms, whether it's the, the, um, the, uh, way it, the way we count in a dance studio or the time of photography that Alan so beautifully um, made sure we knew um, and, and, and brought forward. Um, uh, the way that both Becca and Jens were talking around uh, uh, forms of temporality that are theatrical, not necessarily performance art, not necessarily performative, but making certain kinds of distinctions around that specific form, or even that, as I brought up earlier, the narrative form of the book, the Moby Dick that um, Jens was bringing up. Um, obviously film, um, and, and it's many different temporalities in the way that, um, that many of the artists and critics were encouraging us to um, uh, uh, to have uh, multiple ways of understanding even this, even a single form when it comes to video or film, or thinking too about uh, Nora remind, uh, t t talking about sound and the manipulations around sound, and then that particular way that time both continues and stops when uh, uh, the, the film continues without sound. Um, something that I also found like beautifully re-embodied re in Oakley when we heard her, when we w heard her crying, and then watched her continue to cry in silence. Which, as I said to Nora, I went immediately to Mother Courage and si that silent scream. Um, so uh, different forms of temporality, all the way now, of course, to um, Chamber Street and all that, um, uh, and uh, that uh, Liz is reminding us and making sure that we know and that we need to work for the ne next iteration to think more about music the ba as a, and the notion of the score um, as a fundamental springboard. Uh, language has been a huge thing. Um, how we, what language we use to describe what. Um, the, the constraints of language, the imprecision of it, and as Jonah really reminded us, the way in which we get into certain types of binary frames, like object versus time, or theater versus visual art, that then also end up obs obscuring differentiations within categories. So that theater is not theater is not theater. Visual art is not visual art is not visual art. I mean, when he made that point about the proscenium being different from the black box, et cetera. So that hazard of language but also the possibilities of language, um, of, of the way that, say, taking the notion of a score to a new context, an old tradition to a new context, sort of dynamizes a new context and also sort of gives the score, the concept of the score, back to itself differently. Or sim similarly, when Joe rehears the term choreographer, choreography through Sabina's use of it, you know, a familiar term, an all too familiar term that he rehears, or Becca, Rebecca Schneider using 
um, uh, elaborating on the idea of patina or even film, which got a different hearing here once we thought of it as the layer of the layer and that coating um, uh, associated with patina. I talked about musical, the fourth, a fourth category I'm calling musical chairs, but that particular way in which forms are being moved across different places, the ways that um, I, I brought up earlier, people are wondering if the grass will be greener in new contexts in which they're moving, whether the toys that they have there will be better or worse. Um, uh, but also, not only when the, how that um, affects uh, different art forms and practices, but also um, divisions within institutions, within academic departments. We talked about um, the renaming of varieties of departments from video art to social practice, um, new genres, which hasn't been renamed but maybe should, um, or uh, 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 art, what is art history, what is theater and performance and dance, and what is film and media, we can say right there. Um, uh, and similarly, also, obviously, the, the um, musical chairs within, it seems, institutions, whether they be um, museums or other types of art organizations, where who is photography and what is media, who is education, who is uh, painting, um, all are also, we, we have these chairs um, um, being um, moved and sliced, and along with that, a certain amount of anxiety um, about what does it mean that you've been placed in a new chair. Um, what does it mean that you get the Whitney Prize and find that you're scared or that you're sick with fear? Um, or or, or uh, Alan, w I think, was so generous to, to, to note that particular anxiety that you might be replaced, not only that you're moving to a new place, but that someone else is taking one's place. Um, audience, different ways of thinking about, obviously, the audience member as an interior uh, integrated part of the work, but also that even the language we might use to talk about that figure changes if we think of an audience member as a beholder or a viewer or a gazer or a participant or a reader or uh, with Judy um, or as a, a wrong-footed perceiver of perception whose whole nervous system is involved. Um, those are different ways of, of thinking about the... the um, what it is to encounter. Um, a, and then a, a term that's a, a, a line of th thought that's terribly important to me is around support systems. I tend to think um, both aesthetically and socially about support systems and how they become integrated, whether we're thinking about profit, nonprofit, state based systems, um, uh, informal or self organized art, art organizations. Um, I think about Darcy's um, and uh, uh, but also the support systems that end up being, say, inside of the work, whether they end up being like Ferran inside of the work, where he as a certain artist support system becomes inside um, the work, and even their competition comes inside. Or thinking about the final picture, Dor Darcy's staff and um, colleagues, you have that sort of sense of that team of people that reminds you of the relationality of the support system that keeps um, uh, this art going, but that it was also challenged along the way. Um, uh, but And then more and more, some of these places where the uh, support system becomes a, a, an infrastructure that is interior to the work, not outside of the work or external to it, um, whether in um, artist-run gallery spaces that are also art projects or artworks, as we heard with Daniel, or Jonah, Jonah's talk discussion about theatrical infrastructure. Um, uh, that, it, but also his notion that the visual art con visual artist contribution to his collaborations are also support systems. That was a word, a, fr a way of phrasing that he, that he used. Or even I, I was talking to Judy about the, the notion that um, man walking down a building is a duet with the person holding the pulley. <laughs> um, so that notion that it's interior to the work, I, I found quite striking. Um, an another thought. I have to just reiterate, and I think it's came up right from the beginning with Sabina's talk and all the way through, the notion that a certain kind of time-based practice, a turn to events, et cetera, is part of a, is on the one hand understood to be um, a radical move away from object-based process, object making, and at the same time fully consonant with this much larger change, um, which we c can talk in, in a very easy, perhaps too easy way, as a Fordist to post-Fordist turn. 
but that particular way that I know it is very fast and loose that some have of saying we once made objects in the industrial mode, now we are turning to a service economy that is whose, whose um, virtuosic uh, labor makes immaterial products, something that um, Sabina brought up here at the end. And so that um, we, so that the creation of experience, the creation of the event, uh, is is consonant with this um, the creation of hospitality, the creation of a service economy, and the maintenance of a service economy that is very much how capital runs, how things are motored right now. So that um, that pressure that so many of the curators voiced of of, of thinking of performances and time-based works of various sorts not only as the sort of radical break, but it's fully consonant with the creation of the inclusive museum, the blockbuster exhibit, and the pressure for, um, for a certain kind of spectacle. And the last thing I would say, I have it as schools and PST. I, uh, the, but the particular way that this keeps coming up of, about the function of schools in California, on the West Coast, uh, as, as experimental laboratories and support systems for really vital work. And I think that that is something that became so very clear in so much of what came out in P uh, of Pacific Standard Times um, and the whole coordination, and certainly is very much on view in Connie Llewellyn's exhibit as well. And so I think also together about what those of us who are on the West Coast and beyond, um, how we think about the educational environment um, as that kind of laboratory and how we might make a, a sort of a new round together. So those are some points of contact. Mm. Anyone wanna? That was so comprehensive, I don't know. Yeah. I just wanna <laughs> add one word that uh, is, um, that may or may not be pertinent at all, but the idea of the curator as custodian. And I was thinking about Steve's side talking about scooping the dead goldfish out of the yes. Nanjun Pike thing yes. and, and all the different roles that we've heard about that that um, the maintenance that actually has to happen this um, to keep works and performances and time-based events going yeah. but I also think correct me if I'm wrong dance people that custodian is the term that people use if you're the person who knows the dance is that right isn't well, that you're a custodian sometimes sometimes oh, do people People use it. You're the. I've heard that. The yours. Studio, yes, I'm getting somebody's studio, nodding. Yeah. yeah, that you're mm -hmm. the custodian. So uh -huh, in a way uh -huh, that you right. that, that you can learn that yeah. you're a transmitter that you yeah. can learn mm -hmm. an action mm -hmm. in your body and hold it mm -hmm. in your muscles and uh -huh. thus, the ballet mistress. Or, right, uh -huh, right. Uh -huh. So the the custodian mm -hmm. is um, an act of caretaking that happens in your Absolutely. muscle memory um, also. And yeah. so there's this way that that word nicely yeah. connects in some ways the kind of yeah the rote acts of cleaning up um, and the labor that goes into that, but also how we need to keep that you know restaging or reenacting or um, reliving these histories um, sometimes happens in this um, extremely bodily way. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. well, one thing I wanted to bring up, which I feel in some ways um, wasn't addressed uh, particularly directly, and here we are sitting in uh, at UC Berkeley, a public institution that's quickly being privatized, and mm -hmm. the relationship between the kinds of uh, discussions that we're having, particularly with the centrality of the museum and other kinds of uh, private cultural institutions, is uh, are, we, we, uh, are we thinking enough about what public art policy mm -hmm. is yes. in this mm -hmm. country and, 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 and what our role uh, is in raising those questions. I mean, I, I've been around long enough. Uh, I came up in the publicly funded alternative uh, spaces, and uh, there were discussions all the time by uh, curators and arts administrators and artists about money, about economics, about how things were being funded, about sustainability, uh, which uh, as all, as that world sort of has receded seems to be spoken about uh, in in you know political terms less less and less and and you know it's, I, I uh, the 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 move toward the museums and and it's extraordinary to see uh, curators working so hard to adapt the museum to the needs the changing needs of artists but at the same time. 
uh, the, are, are we losing a kind of multiplicity of venues and experiences and relations to the community as uh, we centralize uh, you know, our, our culture within these private institutions and, and singular institutions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Non-profits, but are funded by private philanthropy, right? right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. Other other thoughts, questions, elaborations, disagreements. Yes, Jens. Please come on down. In fact, I'd love it if a lot of people were a lot closer. <laughs> I think um, one of the things that I saw was really interesting when we were talking about. Uh, the sort of way of how musicians try to reposition themselves within the sort of cultural landscape. And we often came back, and maybe this was also me in particular, talking about the Tino Segal exhibition and, and the Marina Abramovich exhibition, and the sort of like ways in, in which performance art in those type of contexts often is sort of like degraded to really be what uh, Sabina was talking as, so sort of like the side show or the side dish. And um, I kind of felt like maybe there could have been a little bit more conversation ar around that because this is sort of like where I feel the, the, a really sort of problematic situation begins to occur where like a gap opens up between a sort of more serial, serious examination of a practice the way we've done it here over the last few days and the use of performance to create, and I think I mentioned that in my talk, sort of, you know, create celebrity or spectacle. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about, you know, um, projects at the Guggenheim that Francesco Vizzoli did there with Performer, where they had, like, I don't know, um, Natalie Portman and mm -hmm. Tilda Swinton and all these type of people on stage reading, and it becomes a sort of, like, almost sort of Hollywood event, mm -hmm. and it's completely and utterly disconnected to what I'm interested in, and I think what you guys are talking about, about as well. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, it sort of, like, becomes this thing where there's not this one art world anymore, but there's sort of like 10 different ones, and they're sort of like becoming completely disconnected. You know, I'm not even sure if I'm in your world and you're in mine, or, right. you know, or mm -hmm. Desiree is in ours, or, and so on and so yeah. forth. Mm -hmm. no? What, can we take that up for a bit? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to talk about that, because I um, often thought um, that dance and performing arts in museums was like the accessory or accessorizing. It was, the, it was there to dress up the, the, the important exhibit. Um, <coughs> and I think that's shifting, but one thing I noticed that hasn't shifted so far in the dance presentations that I've um, witnessed and experienced is there are very little um, contextualizing materials. There are very little talks around mm -hmm. what's being presented. There, mm -hmm. um, there are no publications. Mm -hmm. um, the curators are you know, I think still tentative and nervous and want to know, but mm -hmm. perhaps could reach out more to scholars within dance or other curators, like, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's shifting. I, I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm seeing um, and, um, that happening, um, but I, I agree, you know, why, so you see the beautiful work in the beautiful space and then you walk away and you really don't have any mm -hmm. information about the mm -hmm. choreographer or the dancer or the mm -hmm. context or the history or, mm -hmm. or in a, even in creative ways, Jens, which you are doing in your work, you know, what, how to handle that, um, I think is the next step mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. um, I also just want to say one burning thing while I have the microphone, yeah. <laughs> which has been on my mind about Civil War reenactments and reperforming and all of that. And um, it's been on my, it's, I was sort of turning away and thinking about um, what is different? And I showed man walking down the side of a building and I know it was not the same and it was glamorous and there were all these issues in New York, um, but what was different than a reenactment, a reenactment, you don't have ammunition in the gun. Mm -hmm. When you're watching someone walk down that building, mm -hmm. it's precarious. Mm -hmm. And I think that in this sense of reperforming, even Marina's reperformers, I knew many of them, there's, it's as if they're fake but they're actually in real time. And I feel like we should look at this from the perspective of the actual performer mm -hmm. and dancer, mm -hmm. rather than just as object mm -hmm. as, you mm -hmm. know, there's a little bit too much rush to judgment yes. around that, I, yeah. I want yeah. to say. Thank you. Yeah. It was precarious, but properly insured. <laughs> <laughs> right. Here, Nora and Simon. Um, I just wanted to pick up again on this sort of idea of um, 
dance and performance within museum spaces. And going back to uh, what Rebecca mentioned, um, I think on the first day, where she talked about the commodity of the live. And this sort of also connects to Mark's comments about the museum as basically um, having dead objects, static objects. Mm -hmm. And so that when you're introducing the live into um, this space, and I thought also of Godard's Bande à part, where they go running through the museum, through the Louvre, <laughs> and you've got all that life and energy mm -hmm. going through it at a sort of breakneck mm -hmm. pace. And it made me, though, think about um, what came up, I think it was also on the first day, about zombies mm -hmm. and the sort of the trope mm -hmm. of the zombie connected mm -hmm. to labor. And then I was thinking, well, maybe it's not really a zombie. And I, you know, this kind of connects to what um, Andrew was mentioning, that what hasn't really been discussed here is new media or media mm -hmm. um, and the internet and the digital. Um, and I was thinking of maybe instead of a zombie, we should be talking about avatars. And that with the access of, you know, sort of the internet, I mean, we can show examples on YouTube, as was done several times. Um, we can access images from museums all through the internet. But what you can't access then becomes the live performance. And right. if this isn't a In that way... Moment, that's what retroactively that gets moment, them, right. exactly. And right. so if this shift isn't also part of maybe an anxiety of still legitimating an existence of the physical materiality of the museum or the institution. Mm -hmm. I think maybe we'll just accumulate some questions since we're at the time we have to end. So let's, let's accumulate thoughts. And, yeah, go ahead, Simon. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just have a very short comment yeah. about de-skilling and its relationship to uh, what you were talking about, the changing status of the museum. Mm -hmm. And that is that, uh, you know, in, in Buclo, the skilling is tied also to an aesthetic. But right. in the sense that we are thinking about the skilling, I think one of the things that we also need to mention is that the skilling is in some ways directly tied to the wild speculation of art. Yeah. In the sense that a Damien Hirst is worth more than a Rembrandt today. Right. Mm -hmm. So, right. To follow up on, uh, the, I, I just want to say something from, from an artist's perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay, in terms of, uh, I, I'm 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 very happy that Julia brought up curating and and how in some ways the creator is the is a person who who uh, holds the dance in some ways. Since Julia and I both took a dance class together, <laughs> 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 and and I want to actually put some pressure on the notion of curating in relationship to care. Mm. And that comes from, it's basically Duchamp, right? So in some ways, one can say that, that just like the holy water that is water and is uh, transformed through this particular uh, you know, blessing or whatever, uh, the Duchampian, uh, I, I, you know, one thing that I always want to to impress upon you know students is the is the relationship between care and the ready-made mm. in that it is a type of selection that is done with great care and he he had very very few he, he chose very very few objects you know less than I think less than 20 you know during an 60 year period when he could have made many ready-mates and this idea of of curating this idea of care I think it's not really just tied to the curator, mm -hmm. you know, since, since we learned it from Duchamp. But what Duchamp does is to think of a relationship of care in relationship to an institution that we can maybe refocus a la something like a Foucauldian model of the mm -hmm. care of the self. Mm -hmm. So in some ways, I think, you know, the anxiety of an artist listening to, you know, you know museum people, <laughs> an institutional, you know, uh, spokespeople talking about art is that, you know, I I'm very, very sympathetic to what Liz was bringing up, which is, you know, we oftentimes make things for each other. We oftentimes make things not for institutions. We oftentimes do it for each other as a form of rehearsal. We oftentimes focus on the rehearsal rather than the product. 
And artists, um, I as one, am, uh, we often look for venues that are actually smaller yeah. and less, uh, you know, I guess less spectacular in some ways mm -hmm. um, because it's what the work needs, you know, and it's basically the care of ourselves, yes. you know, that for yeah. which we are making this work. Thank you. Beautiful. I have to do my own musical chairs thing here and leave because um, I'm out of time. So thank you all so much. Can we pass it to Daniel? Ash, I, I, can we pass it to Daniel? Actually, he had a hand up before. I guess I, I just I wanted to again for maybe I'm gonna echo a little something Simon talking from an artist point of view, but I'm gonna throw up one red flag that I hear, which is um, and I heard it a lot right now is a lot of tribalism, mm -hmm. a lot of people moving back into essentialized positions, protecting very specific territory about their, about specifically about dance or about particular mm -hmm. time-based this or a particular, and it worries me because that wasn't what our conversation was nor what I heard you mm -hmm. speak about the intention of mm -hmm. a cross-disciplinary, mm -hmm. uh, methodology or means by which to start mm -hmm. to look at time-based, mm -hmm. the idea of time-based processes mm -hmm. across both that which moves when we see it move mm -hmm. and that which, I mean, there are not dead objects. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're not dead in the museum. They don't, mm -hmm. just because they're not moving in front of your eyes doesn't mean they're not, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess mm -hmm. I just heard like 50 mm -hmm. red flags right now that, I, that mm -hmm. seemed mm -hmm. the opposite of what yeah. the intention mm -hmm. was to bring a cross representation of ideas together. And I also worry about the idea that there is a answer. Right. And I also worry, or a solution mm -hmm. to a multiplicity of types of issues of sustainability, of funding, of venue, of theoretical directions, of uh, methodologies for analysis, uh, rigorous critical uh, environments and examinations of these things. Um, and so, I, I, the end bothers me, actually, mm -hmm. here, right now, because mm -hmm. instead of us mm -hmm. opening to a door that would allow for um, a real cross-pollinization intellectually and physically, mm -hmm. I, I heard the opposite of that. Okay. And okay. So, Thank you. Okay. You okay. Let's, we'll fight against that, and I'll, if, if, to the extent I contributed to it, my, I, my apologies. I definitely, I don't think there are any silver bullets, no silver bullets on any of the... So, a, a, last, a last thought, uh, if we can get a mic up to Jonah. Thank you, Jonah. By no means a last word, but a, a last yes. thought. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, could harmonize, I could harmonize with a lot of what's, what's been said, but also looking forward, I, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry that we didn't have a larger chance to tackle architecture, uh -huh. that we referred okay. to certain iconic spaces and museums without naming mm -hmm. the architects of, yeah. of those spaces. Yeah, that's right. So even I, I, I myself yeah. could have been more specific in saying, mm -hmm. rather than saying, uh, or, or rather than any of us saying MoMA, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's a, uh, an atrium designed by Taniguchi, and it's very specific. It's very yeah. different from Breuer. And yeah. so these are... So we made wonderful and specific time, but maybe yes, articulating space absolutely. would be another. And the time-based work yeah. in architecture is such a huge conversation. So thank you. All right. I encourage all of you to um, also go to the blog and or, or send more blog posts to us um, via Sarah Gibbons if you'd like to say more. Comment on other people's thoughts if you have more reflection um, as one way to keep going. But please stay in touch. Uh, we do hope to have more iterations of versions of like this, and we have pilot upon pilot and try to keep improving and expanding. So thank you so much, diehards, for sticking with us. And um, we'll um, uh, see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>